First off, we need to draw the design of our project. As always, I use a fading marker. There is another option. My viewers have praised this pencil, which disappears after steaming. And I draw on a silk cold jacquard setting, which I like because of its density. And on dense silk, the color also retains its density and saturation. I will not show the whole process of applying resist or gutta, whatever you call it, but I will share some tips. If your line has gone into a curvature, you can play it up with the drawing. Think of some additional detail. And one more thing, resist doesn't always penetrate through dense silk to the full depth. So you should always check from the back side. You can see that the line turns out to be discontinuous. Of course, this may seem like extra work, but it's always better to correct this mistake right away than to suffer later with leaking resist. On the flip side, I apply the resist again. If your line goes behind your drawing, it can also be improved by drawing another element. And if there is a risk of smearing the resist already applied, I usually use some kind of board. And there are two options. You can place your hand comfortably on this board and move your hand on it. Or you can lean the tube of resist against the edge of the board and move it like on rails. Like this. When you work on unfamiliar silk, it's recommended to check how the color flows on it. Uh, and sure, it's better to do it before pulling silk on the frame. Specifically, this silk I washed in warm soapy water, so the paint flows well on it now. My pattern is divided into four sections. The first one I was planning just with bright dyes. And here actually the gamut is not really collected, just random arrangements of random colors. But they're all bright colors. The second section will be mostly brownish grayish. It's clear that, as always, I vary the gamut, but here I would like to leave everything in the same tone, without particularly dark or light inclusions. So it's a pretty close in tonality. My pattern today is random abstractions. This is the best way for beginners to get a feel how the color behaves while painting and, in general, to get used to it. The third piece will be monochrome, that's using only one color. And there will be more contrast, meaning there will be lighter and darker shades. And I'm even going to enhance this contrast. Well, in the last one, I'm going to use neutral colors with bright ones. And there is a kind of gray pink and bright orange mostly. And since I wouldn't like to wait for the colors to dry on their own, a hair dryer.
For the first coloring, I decided to take a plastic cup for clarity and I mix in it a rather saturated blue color. And each color in the first section I will repaint with it. Now our range becomes more whole, more collected and probably you can say more deep. I think that this blue could be, could be less saturated then more shades would be preserved. But I hope my main message is clear, that if your gamut doesn't seem to you the whole, as if it's not like from the same opera, it can be corrected by glazing all one color, which will unite your gamut. In our second experiment, if the gamut is inexpressive and sluggish, then you can emphasize some areas and highlight them with glaze. Personally, looking at this piece, I'd like to see some active areas. Even though the range is beautiful and solid, I mean all the shades fit together. And then it's better to think about if you want to highlight and emphasize. I stick to the compositional center. And so that this bright accent is not alone, I add company to it. By the way, now I see that this crimson color could have been diluted twice too. It was a sharper contrast than that I'd like to see. In the third version, I'm too lazy to mix the dye in a cup. So, as always, I'll use my plate, which serves as my palette. And in it, I have gray. And this time I'm just making all the colors pretty close together. Oops, gotta move the frame. The bright orange is muted, the gray is more gray. Sometimes you want the color scheme to be just a little bit underwhelming. In our fourth version, the tonality of the glaze is just right on the light dark scale. And this orange glaze beautifully enlivens the dull green color. The gamma turns out to be warm and cozy. As you can see, almost all blunders, all mistakes made while painting the first layer can be corrected by glazing. Bright can be made restrained. Restraint can be made contrasting. You can take away cold gamma in a warmer and vice versa. And it's possible not to glaze the whole area, but only some areas. And if you suggest that you gain benefits of glazing, then please give a like to this video and write a comment. I'll be very glad. And YouTube algorithms will take it into account too.